Find out why our guest had to meet with a general authority before she could be baptized, next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us. We have April Weedow. Wido. Wido, I'm sorry. That's okay. And she has the most fascinating story, and um, so we'll get right into it. Uh, tell us okay. where you were born and a um, little bit about your background. I was born in Pinesdale, Montana, okay. and um, for those who don't know what that is, it's a, it's a small polygamist um, community run by the AUB. Okay, and, and did they? how long has it been there? I believe it's been there since the 1970s. Oh, okay. Um, because um, Rule and All Red um, was murdered in 1978, I believe, so he bought the land up there prior to that. Okay, and so a group of them moved up there? Yeah, it was to give them another safe place to live and, and so open together. So are they together. still associated with the AUB here yes, in Salt Lake? And it's not a split then? Or? Well, <laughs> oh. they're, 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 they're still, like, Pinesville is still AUB, uh -huh. um, but there have been some splits because of the new... Um, so-called prophet of the AUB. Oh, there's been okay. there's been people that have been splitting away from that and okay yeah. So how's life in a polygamy city like that? Um, well, for me growing up, it was normal. Um, was it really? Um, yeah, I didn't know anything else. I didn't know anything different. My my dad um, has the two wives, and he still does. And um, did you feel close to your dad and your parents? Um, yeah, my dad is a really good dad. Um, he was at our home every day, um, okay. and he loves to be a dad. He loves kids. He loves his kids. Um, and how many kids were there? Um, well, my mom had two. Um, she wanted to have more, but wasn't able to. And my mm. my um, aunt, my dad's first wife, has um, seven. Oh, okay. So it's a relatively small family for for where I come from. <laughs> And I guess from what you were saying earlier that you just go to Sunday school and do you have a primary? And yeah, they have, we have primary. And sacrament meetings? So yes. They do that? And yep, sacrament meeting. Went to sacrament meeting every Sunday. Yeah. Um, they have a school in Pinesdale. They have this, it's this little city. It's their yeah. own little town. They have the fire hall and all of, all of that. Yeah. Now, are you baptized uh, at age eight? I was baptized by my dad at age eight. Okay. I was, and are you baptized into the AUB or are you in? in Baptized into the, what do you baptized into, I um, guess I should ask. <laughs> well, they consider it the Church of Jesus Christ um, of Latter-day Saints, too. Um, oh. They just look at the church as the mother church and the priesthood. They look at them as the priesthood, themselves as the priesthood, like the father priesthood. So they have the mother church and the father priesthood. And right now they're not together. But the belief that I grew up with is they would come together eventually. Oh, I see. So the mother church is the Salt Lake group. Mm -hmm. Your church is the priesthood group, mm -hmm. and eventually they would come together and right and be, do what they're supposed to do in the first place. I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so, so they had to separate, uh, you know, be the father priesthood they because they keep plural marriage church. alive, yeah. which was celestial plural marriage to me growing up. Yeah. So your parents are there, and now were you? And so what happens at like age twelve for you? Um, they call it girls' class instead of like young women's, as far as that goes. Oh, girls um, okay. I got a patriarchal blessing, but it wasn't when I was 12 or 13. It was when I was 17. Oh, okay. Um, and I've only had one. I didn't get one when I joined the church. I only had one inside the AUB. Oh, you didn't have one. So, as a, a latter day saint. No. We'll get to that. In a yeah. <laughs> now, one thing I thought was interesting is that you went on a pioneer trek, which yeah. of course most. LDS people would say, well, sure, you go on a pioneer trek, but tell us what was a little different about that. Um, on our pioneer trek, we had we had our paw, and, but we had two maws, um, <laughs> <laughs> at least I two maws. So, so fascinating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but so, it was totally normal. That's how we grew up. That's what we And that's probably we how the of... saints came over here. They had more than one wife yes. right? at that time, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, and that's my, my whole heritage is all, um, you know, before the days in Nauvoo and Nauvoo and crossing the plains and sure. building up Salt Lake City. Yeah. So you like, you kind of have your identity wrapped up in your heritage. Sure. So it's, yeah. it's really ingrained in you. Yeah. But. So, so you're very active through age 17 or how, how far um, did you get through? Yeah, I was. And I, until I was 18, I thought I would um, live that way. I didn't want to because I don't, my dad's a good dad, but it, it's hard. I think that um, it makes victim a 
victims of men as well as women mm -hmm. um, because he thought he had to live it. And so it's really hard for him to treat both of them completely equal. I mean, I think that's impossible. It's got to be tough. Yeah. yeah. And so growing up, I didn't have a dad like outside of Pinestell. And so no family vacations, no, I didn't carry his last name until well, I was an adult. that's I wondered about that, so you didn't... I carried it inside of Pinestell, but, right, not but not outside. outside. So for me, I was like, I didn't want it, but I thought I had to, to go to Celestial Kingdom, mm -hmm. and I knew the church had given that up. <laughs> but my mom took us to the Manti pageant when I was 18, mm -hmm. and um, she took us to a lot of church things, because she was raised in the church until she was almost 13. The LDS church? The LDS okay. church, uh-huh. And then her mom moved to Pinesdale when she was about thir okay. almost 13. Yeah. And I went there and I saw the temple and I thought that the castle wall like thing where it looked like Samuel the Lamanite could be right, on right, there. Right. I really loved it. And I, my grandma was actually married there for the first time. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is where I want to be married. So yeah. I set my goal on that, but it took me like five more years to um, get that out and tell my parents, break the news to them. Well, now, were you not approached before age 18 to be married to someone in, no. the, in the polygamy arena? No. No, really? No, not in the, um, I'm, it has happened in the AUB. There have been arranged marriages, like people that I knew that were moms at the time when I was a kid, there had been, like, there's probably three or four of them that I knew that were arranged marriages and when they were very young. But um, it didn't happen to me. It didn't happen to like, but I don't remember happening to anybody, my sister or oh. any of my peers. Okay, so um, you were, now were you free to go at age 18 or was yeah. that really difficult? No, um, it is, it's, it is, like you have the freedom to go. Culturally but, hard. But it, it is <laughs> hard and, yeah. and like what, that was hard for me to break the news to my mom saying I'm not going to the plural marriage. It I was very hard for me um, because I wanted, I always grew up pleasing my parents well, and that's yeah. something that, that was going to break her heart and um, my family, they were supportive of me getting baptized in this church. She said, it's still God's church. You're oh, taking a step down, but okay. when we come together and maybe someday you'll be able to have the opportunity to live it, but I really didn't want to. <laughs> And not to keep belaboring it, but was that because you saw the difficulties of that lifestyle? Um, yes, or, yes. Yeah. And I, and I, you try to have a testimony of it. Like I thought I had a testimony of it. I'm um, growing up and studying about church history on it and all that. Um, I thought I had a testimony of it, but I really didn't. And I really didn't want it to be true. <laughs> Well, you can see some of the difficulties of that kind of lifestyle. Yeah, and it's... it's. So do you leave there and then come to Salt Lake, is that... Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, when I was 23, I got baptized in the church. I was actually... Um, and was that up there? No, it, it was in Montana. Yes, it was in Montana, sorry. Oh, it, was. it was. in um, Clinton. It was in a branch. I um, got baptized up in a branch in Clinton, Montana, which is outside of Missoula. So tell us, now before you got baptized, though, mm -hmm. you did have to go meet with the general authority. Yes, I did have to meet with Is the general authority. Here, it was in Salt Lake. I had to go to the Salt Lake City, or the church office and building. And what did you have to say to him that made him, allowed him to let you be baptized? So before um, they had that, and it was in 1978 when they said the blacks could have the priesthood, mm -hmm. um, people from my group, the AUB, All Red Group, would um, go and get married in the Salt Lake Temple and then go back and be a part of the group. Oh. And so the church was very aware of that and they didn't want that to happen anymore. <laughs> um, but after 1970, it wasn't a problem because I was told that was now, the temples were now tainted and... Oh, because of the blacks being able to go in. Mm -hmm. oh, and that's I a whole see. other issue for me that's sure. big with me. But <laughs> um, So I had to go in and I had to tell him that I believe all the keys the priest had laid with the church, which was really hard for me to do. With the mainstream church. With the mainstream church, because I was taught that the that the UB had all the keys of the priesthood. Sure. And so that's a very conflicting thing, like who actually really has them. And who has the keys. And who's really the prophet. And then... And then you did you have to denounce polygamy and that lifestyle yes. as of right now? Or? Yes, and um, but he did tell me he's like it, you need to honor your parents. You can go home and visit them, but living there is not an option. Oh, like I wasn't allowed to like go back home to Pinesdale and move in and stay there, like to live there you if to I needed separate to. Separate yourself from the family. Yeah, like honor them and go visit them, but yeah. you don't get to live there that's anymore. A that's a tough thing for a. 18 to 23 year old, 24 year old young lady to yeah. have to give up family and and then all the t teachings that you had had, it, it must have been really difficult for it's you. It's very conflicting. Yeah. Sorry, it's very conflicting because I feel like um, 
growing up, I knew, thought I knew the gospel and knew yeah. all the doctrines. And I, and then when you go into the church, you're like, oh, you're a convert now. You're now you're a Mormon. I'm like, I'm I'm like old school I've Mormon. <laughs> That's what I call it, old school Mormon. Yeah, I've always I was raised Mormon. I mean, and we, the Articles of Faith, Joseph we Smith, memorize those. Book of Mormon, oh, yes. Doctrine and Covenants, the whole business. The whole nine yards. And, and having that hope, and I guess I didn't understand that completely, having that background hope that the churches will eventually meld together again. Mm -hmm. and yeah, That's an interesting And there's enough keys. There's enough of the priests that left in the church and to carry it off triumphant because it's their job in latter days to do that. Like, we're not mainstream, so we don't send out missionaries, but that's the job of the church to do. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so. And they certainly do that. <laughs> well, so tell us what kind of happens. Are you, how, how active are you then as a, a Mormon? I mean, as a Latter-day Saint. So as a, yeah, when I first got baptized, um, I just started um, going to the branch in Clinton. And I had a calling there in the nursery. And they're like, you know, you should go down to Missoula and, and go to the singles ward. So oh. I'm like, okay. So I went, started going to the singles ward and attending institute classes and stuff. And um, that's where I met my um, ex husband okay. and we were married um, in the Manti temple in 2005. So you 2005. had your goal of going down and being married in the temple. Yeah. The Manti temple. We did the, all the temple prep and yeah. the classes and then we went and we got married in the Manti temple and um, it was really weird. <laughs> did you think so? <laughs> I, yeah, I was really grateful that it wasn't like all the things that happened before 1990 when they changed oh, it all, so, but yeah. it was still very weird to me. It felt it felt kind of cold and empty to me. It didn't feel like you, the stories you hear, or what you, you know, the history of it all, like that I was always, because I didn't go to the temple growing up. Yeah. Um, but the way we seem to build that experience up and then it mm -hmm. turns out to be Little, it was just really cool. cool and like uh, when it, it just I seemed understand. like they were just like doing it um i don't know robotically and it was just memorized and it was just and like when she so gave true. me my name i was just like it was just weird you yeah. know it was just like she just like just where does she where did she get that name you know yeah. like it was just the name they gave her that day to give and she pretended like she pulled it i don't know it was really strange Interesting. very strange indeed but so, you are active then for a few years. So yeah, I know we um, we went to a board in Missoula, made a lot of really good friends, yeah. and um, my callings mainly were like with the kids and stuff. Yeah. It was, you know, we primary and yeah. school and yeah, yeah, and we and nursery too. I did a lot of that. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> and then the activity um, activities communities, yeah. yeah, community and stuff like that, which was really fun and um, yeah. So yeah. we were. Yeah. We were active. And so what happens along the way? Um, along the way, um, we ended up being married for about 10 years, and then um, it just got worse and worse. We moved from Missoula to Nevada, and it just it just got worse there. And mm -hmm. I so. remember calling out to a friend that was in the bishopric that was actually friends with him, but it was I had met with the bishop several times talking to him about my problems, and I just never seemed to... I mean, he was a really good bishop, and but it just never seemed Nothing to... Nothing got better yeah, and got no. addressed properly. And out of desperation, I made a call one time to this friend of ours, and his biggest concern wasn't the physical abuse. It was the fact that my husband had stopped um, being really active in Nevada and had um, stopped paying his tithing. Oh, that was and he his was like, concern. Huh? Mm -hmm, <laughs> the standing of, like, well, that's how you know when your good standing is in the church. It was more about, like, all about the good standing in the church. and Rather than the way he was treating you. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's yeah. sad. So I eventually left him in 2015. And in 2015, we got a new car in June, and it had XM radio on it. And um, I got addicted to listening to the message, which is a Christian channel, and it's all Christian music. Christian and... music. It's all Christian music, <laughs> and um, I just couldn't stop listening to it. So, but when I moved, it and we had to do kid exchange, like in Wendover. I had a lot of hours of driving twice a week, and to exchange kids, and mm -hmm. and so you were listening to this. I was listening to the this. message program. And yes. And those songs just filled my spirit and my heart. And I just remember driving down this one part of the road. I just remember, I don't know where it was. It was between Salt Lake and Wendover. But it's just like this big empty highway like rolling. And I just remember looking out thinking, what, what if that's true? What if Jesus really is enough? What if it's really that simple? Yeah. You know, what if what a really? Good message. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I just couldn't stop listening to it. And I, I found out later as I started reading my Bible and trusting it that it, it was the Bible verses. It was the 
Bible yeah. they put into their songs opened my heart up because I always had my blinders on and sure. you talk about stuff, it's like anti-Mormon, I don't want to hear about it. Right. But that opened my heart. Oh my goodness. To it. And, um, and so you, you listening to these songs, uh, and then you ended up coming to a church. Um, yeah, I, I was listening to those songs and then I was teaching primary um, at the same time uh, later on. and. Um, it was the DNC. It was stuff that it was stuff about um, Joseph Smith when he first went, when he was going to Carthage jail and um, like why the Nauvoo Expositor and all that stuff. And I just started doing more research. I, I think, well, I know actually, I really believe with all my heart that the those songs opened my heart to looking. Yeah. Whereas before, I would never have even thought about looking further into that. Just like believe by faith that he was really a martyr and really everything that you've been taught and. Yeah. But I started digging and doing a, a lot of research on it. Um, well, just to back up just yeah, a little sorry. bit, maybe, what did you think of Jesus at this time as a former polygamist and now mm. an LDS member? Did What was your relationship with Jesus? Um, I didn't really have one because it was all about Heavenly Father. And Jesus was our older brother and our... And Satan's brother, and so I looked at him Satan's in that brother, way of our yeah. Savior, and I was grateful for that. But I didn't understand anything about the atonement. It was all about Gethsemane. I didn't even know about the te the, the veil and the temple being torn from top to bottom when Jesus was crucified. That was new to me too. That was new to me. So new. Yeah. Yeah. And and then finding out when I did more research on finding out what that really meant, and yeah. finding out that Jesus fulfills the need for a prophet. And did you feel distant then? In the from Jesus? I felt way? distant from Jesus and I felt distant from my Bible. I felt like there, whenever I tried to read in the Bible, it was just easier to read the Book of Mormon because yeah. it was like supposed to be this true book and the Bible was, what what could you trust in there? If you, They were never clear on what was not <laughs> translated right, so I felt like there was a, almost like a veil over it. So you start teaching these, and it was nine-year-olds or something, yeah, church they're history, nine and, ten and so you started studying more. What did you study specifically? Yeah, Anything um, that the, can you remember? About um, Joseph Smith, about his credibility, his character. Okay. Yeah. Had you heard about him marrying other men's wives at so that point? So I hadn't. I knew he had <laughs> wives because I, I grew Polygamous, up. Polygamous, sure. Yeah, yeah, I grew up in that. And so they I, believe that for sure. A, oh, B's. definitely. Yeah, that he was. Yeah, I was taught Jesus was married. I was taught Jesus had three wives. So. <laughs> Otherwise, he couldn't go to heaven, right? Well, yeah, and that—that that was the marriage, and where he drank, he turned the water to wine. That was his marriage. That's what I. These are the things sure, I was taught. So, sure. um, anyways, it's all crazy, but yeah, I. I um, was doing research on that, and I came across this video called, I think it's Jesus Christ versus Joseph Smith, and mm. that one, and um, it goes into all, I mean, I've used, you probably have seen I've it. I've seen it, yeah. Um, and that was a big eye-opener to me. I had no idea that they had done all that DNA testing and that they had, like, that kind of proof. <laughs> um, so that was a big eye-opener. I think one of the biggest ones bef right b before that was, I was reaching out to my sister and telling her because she never identified as Mormon. <laughs> and oh, she's she like, didn't? I'm not going to conform. Uh uh. No, no my sister is not. Well, is she polygamous, though? Or my sister she... is not, no. No, not polygamous. But oh, I mean, sorry. she was raised polygamous. Oh, yes. You know, we're raised in the same household. Yeah, when and, did she leave? Um, she, she just grew up and just left. She just, okay. um, she didn't want nothing to do with it. So she never sister, did. What did your sister do? Well, she as she, I said, um, I'm just going through this. And I need more things to look at that I can trust. And she said, well, why don't you call one of our friends that we really trust in Hamilton, and our friend that we knew when we were growing up from a Lutheran church, because oh. we used to go to the library there. Yeah. And she knew us as little kids, and she knew us growing up. And she's like, she's a trustworthy source. She's a good Christian woman, and she knows the good stuff to look at. And the very same, so I called her up and I talked to her, and she was just, just so happy, just so thrilled that I was looking. and. <laughs> And um, so she sent me some stuff and she sent me the link and it was kind of crazy because my sister and my friend both at the same time, the same day, sent me the um, website for um, Utah, Hot Lights, Utah Lighthouse Ministry. The same day. The same day. <laughs> and that I, the quote on there of his boast, I had never seen that before. Hadn't you really? No, I had never seen and that. it's in the history of the church, isn't right. it? Right. Yeah. Yes. And I've actually found the book and I've looked at it. and. <laughs> um, just to, you know, Verify there it is, there. it's right there, you <laughs> right. know, and also when people ask me, what book, what are you talking about? And I'm like, it's, it's really there. It's, it's not anti-Mormon. It's, right. it's, 
I find that kind of funny now, anti-Mormon. It's like all in the doctrine. It's all there in the church history. Yeah, um, yeah. But I found that and it popped up and I'm just like, oh my word. I, I felt like I was, I, I started to cry and I felt like I wanted to just, I was sick because that he said that he was, you know, basically bigger than Jesus. And did more, did a better work than Jesus. Yeah, or, yeah. and I knew then I couldn't follow a man like that. It's like, I felt like if I followed a man like that, I'd be marching myself to hell. Wow. It's like, I can't follow <laughs> that. So, but um, I was dating at the time and he, he was just like, okay, whoa, this back up. You're like the ultra, mo ultra Mormon girl, you know, and <laughs> now you're saying that you don't believe in it. So he went along for, for just trying to prove to me that it was right. Now this is a fiance at yes. this point? Yes, well, he was just a boyfriend at the time. Yeah. And then we, yeah. But he was LDS and he wanted, right? He was from the, he's, he oh, never, he was, he was never in mainstream Mormonism. Okay, and he wanted to prove the church. He wanted to prove that Mormonism was, was, was true. true. Yeah. And, um, so I, and we, I, we looked at that. We wa I had him watch that video with me. Yeah. Um, and that was when we first learned about the um, first visions. And I was taught there's only one. With the different accounts. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. That was really mind blowing to that see. That was for me too. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, and I don't understand people tell me, they're like, well, it's okay. I mean, it's all telling the same thing. I'm like, actually, it's not. And <laughs> not well, yeah, how can we expect him to remember? I mean, he was just a kid and all that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't understand that because when moms have their babies, they remember <laughs> the, they remember how much the baby weighed, what time it was, like all those details yeah. they remember. So you, you, if you, God is going to come to you, I think you're going to remember. <laughs> how can that, how can that be so blurred and, and put yeah. into different accounts? So he said, okay, I really want to look into this because he was getting more convinced, but it was still really hard for him, yeah. you know? Um, and I, cause I feel like I had, I had two plus years of that music just opening my heart. I was more ready for it. Yeah. For someone who hadn't had that and to just be cold turkey, look, this is, this is wrong, this is what's right. I mean, it's, it's hard. Well, what drew you then to Jesus more so? Um, what drew you to, um, to that direction? The Bible. Um, yes, just being able to um, dive into it, dive yeah. into the New Testament is where I started. Because we'd never trusted it as... We never trusted it LDS, completely. No. No, and so... Were you learning a lot? I was learning a lot. And Jesus yeah. said there was no marriage in heaven. And that was, that was a big one. <laughs> That's a surprise, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's all about... Especially for a polygamist when, that, when you have to have three wives to... Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So now you do end up going to a Christian church. Right, um, and that's that's part of it. We went to um, we went up to the bookstore, the Utah Tanner's has, bookstore. Uh huh. Yeah. We went up there. We wanted to, we wanted proof of the um, different accounts of the first vision. Right. Um, and she gave it to us. Isn't she sweet? I mean, <laughs> she's, she's a, so gracious. Oh, she's such a sweetheart. I yeah. just love her. I'm so grateful <laughs> that she and Gerald dug in and they did all that hard work before. Yeah. You know, they're amazing. Amazing and. But she sat down and she talked to us for quite a while she and does with everybody. answered so it's many amazing. questions. Yeah. yeah, and he, you know, he had a lot of questions for her and yeah, and yeah. Um, and then having the proof of the first vision accounts and mm -hmm. it is it, it, we we really needed that. I think you know you, there's so much that happens when you come out of Mormonism that you have to like det I call it the Mormon detox. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> that you actually tough. have to detox all the right. thought, the mindset, and yeah everything. A lot um, to deal with. A lot sure. to deal with. Yeah. yeah. So I talked to her and I said, I asked her if she knew of a good Christian body to meet with. And she, she's asked me where I live. And I said, in Murray. And she's like, Oh, <laughs> and she wrote down her, she goes, Oh, mine's right in Murray. And then she wrote down to several others as well. So give me options. And yeah. it's like 30 seconds from my house. So of course we went there first. And that was discovery. And that's discovery. Yeah. And you've uh, just loved it. Oh my goodness. I just, I absolutely love it. I cannot say it enough. And the people there are the follow, they're followers of Jesus and they take yeah. that very seriously. What happened? Was this the first time you'd gone to a Christian church? You mentioned this Lutheran friend before, but no, had you gone to a Christian I church had, before? I had, not like for a service like that, but like my mom um, had a Norwegian grandma who was not her biological grandma, but like adopted yeah. and would take her every Christmas to a candlelight service uh -huh. um, at the Lutheran church. Yeah. And so every Christmas Eve and that, so when she found the, the Lutheran church, so we would go to the library there and stuff. She started taking us to the Christmas Eve uh -huh. candlelight service as well. And so I'd been to like stuff like that mm -hmm. and I had known Christian people. Right. 
Um, but hadn't gone to a real service no. like Discovery. What did you think of that? No, I was in love with it from the very get-go, from the very moment. Could you believe the songs and the praising? And it was it was just like it um, resonated with my heart. It was like I felt like I was home then because um, those are all the songs I had been praising Jesus to on the radio. On the radio. On the That's radio. Right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm learning new ones too, yeah, but there's still yeah. so many of them that I had already known. And I'm like, <laughs> so this is what they do at church. This is... This is why it opened my heart. This, this is, is worship. worship. Yeah. yeah, this is worship. And Isn't that it, awesome? And I don't ever want to miss. The times I have to miss are really hard on me. Yeah. Like, I want to go. It's not that dreaded three-hour, like, work session. When you <laughs> left the polygamy group at age 18, did you feel a lot of guilt and a lot of angst about leaving and that maybe I've done the wrong thing? Um, or Well, at 18, I hadn't officially, officially left. I just knew that's where I, want, I wanted to be but in the church. But you wanted to be away from... Mm -hmm away from and not live polygamy. But I just meant, did you feel a, a sense of guilt? I did. That? Yeah, or, I did. I did. I felt like I was betraying like what was God, really true. because God loved you at that point. Yeah. Or, and like just the mistakes you make in life too. Um, I know sure. as a Christian, we're all simple and everything. And I realized that it's Jesus that stands in and takes all that away. I, I can't work for it. And I just always felt the burden weighing me down of all the guilt of everything I did wrong. Yeah. And like, and leaving the group and going to the church and giving up so much and Oh, it just weighs you down because you're like, who is the prophet, really? Yeah. Who is the prophet? And now it's just, there's just such a freedom. And Did you ever understand grace? As, uh, no, because I read before? the Book of Mormon religiously. I read it a <laughs> lot, Yeah. over and over and over. I really yeah. thought it was something I should really have embedded in me. And, and, it, and when it talks about grace, you're saved by grace after all you can do. Right. So like, well, when are you done? When do you know that you're done? When do you know that you've done enough? And you when don't know until you die where you're going to be. <laughs> right. I'm being taught that, you know, all the things like the Adam God doctrine and growing up with that. and I um, guess that's part of your, the polygamist, the Adam God theory, right? Mm -hmm. Is that still part of it? Brigham Young and all mm -hmm. that? Wow. Everything that the church gave up, they still have. Yeah. So it's... The, I hadn't thought of that because we just kind of... Well, so... Just freedom and grace and joy and it's just been wonderful, hasn't it's it? It's been, yeah, liberating and so much freedom in Jesus. I just, I feel like I'm able to just love everybody the way, you know, that Jesus wants me to and not have to worry about like, oh, well, they need to join the, the real church so they can, and they better stop drinking their coffee and they better, you know, all that kind of thing, all those kind of things that you think of as a Mormon that don't make them worthy to go to the temple. So yeah. then they're not worthy and... One step forward, two back, and you're just never sure that you've got it all together. Right. It's just amazing. Yeah. Well, gosh, there's just a little bit of time left. Anything you want to share with your family, friends? Um. Yeah. Um, should I look at you? What's that? Oh, I was just... Anything. Um, I just, I'm really quick to back up really quick. Oh, sure. Um, it's really fast, but I was talking about the friend I knew that was Lutheran. Mm -hmm. Um she and another friend of my mom's um, were praying for us as children the whole time. Um, really? I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. So it really um, was a testimony like to me, a prayer. You were in someone's prayer this mm -hmm. all this time. And the one, she's 85 now, and she lives in North Carolina. So when I called her and I told did her. Did you t call her and tell I her? Told what her. did she say? She was just like, well, I'm not surprised. It's an answer to my prayer. <laughs> and it's been about, what, four years now um, that you've been out? No, I I came out last um, fall. Just just. I'm what they call a baby Christian. A baby, yeah. I think I am too. Still yeah. after seven years, but yeah, yeah. It's so very just, new. It's very fresh. Yeah. So you're still learning a lot. And, I'm still learning so much, and it's so wonderful. And you know so much more now about Mormonism than you ever did as a Mormon, right? Well, and I'll, I'll see, I can see it for what it is too. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Because you step back and be a little objective. Right. But the joy is in what Jesus has done. And yeah. Isn't that a wonderful... Yeah. Yeah. I just, it's... I've just appreciated so much being exposed to, to Jesus and who he is and the cross and yeah. what that means. And I love your shirt there. His grace the is grace. enough. <laughs> His grace is enough. And Jesus is enough. Jesus and is we enough. can celebrate the, the empty cross. We don't have yeah. to... You know, be okay. scared of that. So I guess I kind of, uh, yeah, I'm glad you went back and mentioned okay, that okay. about the prayers because I think <laughs> prayers do help and we, I pray for my family too. But anyway, so any last words to the family, friends, whatever? Yeah. Um, I just want to say that just please read your Bible. It's, you can trust it completely. Yeah. Um, read it as a little child and, and know that Jesus is enough. Yeah. 
Well, April, thank you so much. What a fascinating story, and I'm glad God's found you and, and you've been able to come to come to know who He is and and have that freedom and free of guilt. Yeah. So That's thanks right. so much, and we'll see you next time here on the Ex Mormon Files. Mm -hmm.